For you, the headbangers of America, they spent a day with Metallica. The new, the heavy, good heavy they metal. Crash. Loud, fast, heavy, you know. It's different, it's great. Metal Mania followed the band to the offices of College Media Journal in New York, where they were promoting their killer LP, Master of Puppets. Our hard rock reporters, who are the stations, phone in their playlists to us every two weeks, and we make them into a chart, and today was the day they were supposed to play, phone in their playlist, and they got a big surprise because Metallica was there to uh, greet them. And how was Metallica doing in their report? They've been number one for the past uh, four weeks. Uh, this guy wants an interview. <laughs> uh, yeah, sure. Too sure Come where the, head, or the headline stuff's taking us. Uh, no, I don't know where this place is, no. <laughs> I just know that we're somewhere in Long Island. Doing Metallica on the radio. Cool. After a show, you know, we have time for an encore, and uh, you don't really hear any yeah, yeah, or any booze, you know, it's kind of, uh, you know, like, what was that, you know? Did you like it? I don't know, did you like it? You know? We saw the new wave of British metal that was coming out. We knew it was gonna hit, like, you know, a couple of years before. It was going to hit the states fairly soon, so you know we liked doing it, and you know we were doing it down in LA, and a lot of people didn't know what you know what the hell was going on. You know, they didn't see any hairdos or makeup or anything. We're just going up there bashing it. Kill them all. That Kill album all. is the Ride best. The lightning is the best. Their music isn't like garbage, you know. They know how to get the crowd going. It's music. We do what we want to do, you know. If they consider that selling out, then. Uh, whatever There's a lot of people think you sold out just because you're on a major label and are very popular or maybe you don't play a thousand miles an hour the whole time or you know I mean we just we'd be doing the same thing if we were still on you know independent label the basic principles are like the same as they were you know five years ago when we were starting out in the garage just like on a bit higher level like I said you know but I mean still the same four idiots you know <laughs> trying to stay in tune and stay on time <laughs> just want to go up there and play and they want to see the kids get treated well they sign autographs every night and they insist on being in touch with the kids which is why they'll come here to CMJ and answer the phones and talk to the people that play the records and talk to the kids I mean it's very important to them that they stay in touch with their fans they're just like us they party everything they turn it up they crank up the volume they just enjoy being themselves they wear the same clothes on stage that they wear in the street. There's no costumes, there's no makeup, no wardrobe. It's a very real thing. You know, we're not trying to be something big and fancy, you know. It's just us doing what we do. Let's like yeah. keep it that way. We're set playing tonight at 7.30, and I suggest that everybody gets down here right now yeah! and see the best friends in the United States of America! Metallica will be on tour with Ozzy Osbourne through the summer, so be sure to check them out. Coming up, we've got new video from that Japanese sensation, Roundness, and live Gary Moore, so don't for any reason move from your TV set. Metal Music News here. Metallica debuted their new bassist, Jason Newstead, Saturday night at a surprise show at the Country Club in Los Angeles. Jason is from Phoenix, Arizona. He should know Alice Cooper, and uh, he used to be in the band Flotsam and Jetsam. He replaces the late Cliff Burton, who was killed in a bus accident while the band was on tour in Sweden over a month ago. Well, Metallica will begin making up the world tour dates postponed after Burton's death. They play five dates in Japan starting Saturday, and they will begin U.S. dates around Thanksgiving. This winter, one of the fastest and loudest evenings comes courtesy of Metallica, our good friends, in Metal Church. They're on tour together, and Metal Church are promoting their new album, The Dark. Metal Church drummer Kirk Arrington told MTV the tour has been a big, big break for the band. Oh man, this is like a dream come true, you know, I mean, these guys have been long, good time friends of ours, you know, and it's like, uh, 
they've got the crowd and we're just like thrilled to death to be opening for these guys you know because they're they're basically our type of fans i hate that word too you know but basically they buy our record too so right. it's a good opportunity you know we're getting to play to a lot more people now opening up for metallica i remember the band's bassist cliff burton was killed in a bus accident but uh, only six weeks later metallica found a new bass player jason newstead and went back on tour the band's drummer and founder, Lars Ulrich, told us about Metallica's rapid recovery. We've just always been about fighting on and, and sort of carrying on and, and going against all the sort of uh, obstacles that come in our way. And obviously, we've never encountered anything like this before, but it's like we have to keep going. I think the whole thing has really given us even more incentive and even more of a kick to sort of really do it now, because now obviously we have to do it for Cliff too. Mm -hmm. And it's like, now there's absolutely no stopping us whatsoever. <laughs> well, right now Metallica are on tour in Canada. Uh, they're going to be back in the States on December the 20th. Metallica didn't get to the top of the speed metal scrap heap by feeling sorry for themselves. This past September, when their bassist Cliff Burton was killed in a bus accident, they got themselves back on the road in just six weeks. Drummer Lars Ulrich told us why. Looking back on it now, it's really good that the period of time has been so short. Um, because, like, the main things that we decided when we met up again, you know, about a week after the accident, was that we wanted to do it as fast as possible, which would uh, sort of shorten the time of us sitting around, you know, feeling sorry for ourselves and moaning and groaning and so forth. Metallica and their new bassist Jason Newstead are currently on tour in Canada. They'll be back in the States on December 20th when they perform in Seattle. For Japan for the very first time, playing five successful dates in the land of the rising sun, guitarist Kirk Hammett and James Hetfield told MTV not only did the audiences take to them, but they gave stuff back, too. They run up to us and give us gifts and letters and... Yeah, real useful gifts. <laughs> like Hello Kitty toothbrushes. Yeah, and like... <laughs> socks. Is that a hint? Socks that are Brush way, too, way too small for you and like these Japanese lamps. They're pretty useful when you're on tour. <laughs> brought the fastest form of hard rock into the arenas when they went on tour opening for Ozzy Osbourne. I just found myself, you know, kind of singing to, you know, the first 20 rows or whatever you can actually see, instead of singing out into this big black void, you know, hey, there's someone out there trying to watch the show. <laughs> I can't see you. Can you see me? <laughs> yeah, it was a bit weird. Yeah, I was, just got used to it, though. Metallica currently on the tail end of a North American tour, and they were perform they are performing in Canada right now. For a Cliff Burton the second or whatever, and we just needed, you know, bass player that would would fit in. Jason has, you know, strong individual personality and so forth, and you know, we'll see what happens when we start writing. We don't write on the road, so it's a little early to tell. One of the cool things about being in a band like Metallica is you get all these free T-shirts of like bands all the time and I think this band is very fitting to Metallica it says here in case you can't read it, it says hey little girl want a piece of candy you can, and then, and then on the you back, can transcribe that any way you want <laughs> and on the back and then on the back says sure I'll have a piece of candy and the old man's getting belted in the head I'll have some candy reviving metal's rebel spirit Metallica! Metallica the pioneers of this new breed showed just how strong it could be let's go out fast away have some fun master of puppets went gold with virtually no radio airplay we're sort of like one step we're like furthest out in like left field pretty much from the middle of any of the sort of bigger heavy metal bands today you know sort of as unsafe as you can get <laughs> and um and we get away with it. <laughs> but Metallica couldn't get away from tragedy this fall when bassist Cliff Burton was killed in a bus accident in Sweden. I didn't have a lot of pain, but I was heavy metal hard rock band in the world's number one. Let's introduce the band. Today, we have to come to Metallica. Hello, hello. Thank you. え、メタリカやってきてくれました。え、皆さんもコンサート楽しみにしていたと思いますけど、まずはですね、僕の横にいるジェームス君からですね、ちょっと聞こうと思いますけども、まず最初に日本のファンはあの、クリフが亡くな
あのメタリカが成功した秘訣っていうのはですね何なんでしょうやっぱり、えー、僕らも一番知りたいところですが、えー、一説によると、えー、メタリカのライブを見た人たちがですね、あのー、口コミで伝えたということもあるらしいんですけどもラーズにその辺の、えー、アメリカで成功した世界で成功した秘訣っていうのは何で成功したのかっていうのをちょっと聞いてみようと思います。Well, I think one of the basic ingredients is that we're doing something quite different. You know, we, the first album came out, there wasn't really anything like us before in terms of, of the way that we write the songs and the way we play them live and just sort of the whole attitudes of the band and the songwriting and I mean, some of the factors that have contributed to us being a bit different and sort of achieving success quite fast. メタリカはメタリカあるいはスピードメタルという人もいればヘビーメタルという人もいます、えー、メタリカを正確に呼ぶのは果たして何て呼んだらいいのかというのをですね、えー、ちょっと聞いてみますじゃあカークさんにですねちょっと聞いてみようと思いますけど果たしてメタリカを何て我々は呼んだらいいんでしょうかその辺ちょっと聞いてみましょう Just metallica music. I mean, we play... これでまあこのメタリカにまあえ日本公演に新しいメンバージェイソンが入ったわけですけどもえ彼はえーえーまあえーメタリカに入る前ですねメタリカについてどう思っていたかそして実際にメタリカに入ってメタリカというバンドをどう見たかっていうのをちょっとですね聞いてみようと思いますけどね。Well, they were always at the top of my list, you know, ever since like the demo and、um, the first record, you know, and on. And now it's like you know, it's a dream come true, pretty much. You know, I'm I'm the happiest person in the world, really, right now. Checks in the mail. Definitely. <laughs> 実際メタリカで今入ってみてどうですか？今の気持ちっていうのは。It's great. These guys are making it, you know, really good. I mean, they, they worked with me, had a lot of patience and everything. It seems to be coming together pretty good. The personalities, you know, seem to be working all right. So, so I'm happy. <laughs> 日本のファンこれからもちろんもう見た方もいると思います明日見に行く方もいると思います、えー、ジェームスにメタリカのライブというのはどんなライブなのかそしてメタリカのライブの本質って何なのかっていうのをですね、えー、ちょっと聞いてみようと思いますけどもね「A lot of fun you know it's all about fun and、uh, a bunch of energy is flowing back and forth between you know the crowd and the you know band so it's all about energy fun no huge spectacular bombs glitter stuff just straight ahead fun」最近メタリカとかですねこういったヘビーメタルが非常に良くないというふうなことを言うアメリカのですねいろんな人たちがいるわけですね例えばあの PMRC とかヘビーメタルはダメだといろんなことを言う人たちがいますけどそういう人たちに向かってですねヘビーメタルはそういう音楽じゃないとやっぱり彼らも思ってるわけですけども、まあ、このテレビあの実はお母さんとかお父さんも見てらっしゃいますんでですねその辺のところジェームスのうちからメタリカの音楽あるいはヘビーメタルは悪じゃないっていうことをですねちょっとカメラに向かってですねお父さんとお母さんにちょっと説得していただきたいんですけど It's all bad. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's all about fun. Yeah, there's no secret hidden messages or anything in our stuff. We're just, you know, bringing across our viewpoints. You know, if you want to take them, you know, just take them the way you want. And we're not telling everyone to get to believe in this or believe this. It's all about having some fun. I know, Kaka, this is it. あのー、非常に怪獣が好きなんですねで、まあ、メタリカのアルバムにはあのよく、あのー、怪獣みたいなあのイラストが登場しますけどそれはじゃあ彼のアイデアなんでしょうか明日のショーこれから行こうと思っている皆さんに一人ずつじゃあメッセージをですねいただくことのひょっとするとお母さん来んですかじゃあですね一人一人にメッセージをいただきますのでぜひですね明日行ってみようかしらという気にですねメンバーにさせていただきましょうじゃあ一人一人のメンバーからちょっと明日のコンサートについて、えー、今テレビを見てる君たちにですねメッセージをいただきます Yeah, definitely come down and see a show because it's going to be、uh, like mega excitement for everyone, for all the children.、Uh, it'll be a great time. If you don't go, we'll you, don't, find you. you don't know what you're missing. If you don't go, we'll find you, and I'm sure your parents would want that. <laughs> we, see、okay. you, we see you on the street, we'll. we'll
はいというわけでございまして、えー、明日のコンサートが東京最後になっていますメタリカのおーショーですね皆さん見ていただきたいと思いますまあこういったですねまあメタリカのサウンド非常に、えー、スピードロックでですね非常になんかこうお悪魔的なものをやってんじゃないかと誤解されてますけどもそうじゃないんですね、えー、非常にその伝統的なハードロックを現代風な感覚で、えー、ロックしているという彼らなわけですからね明日のショー楽しみにプロモーションビデオないわけですからねこれ実際見なくちゃいけない私の番組も困ってるんですよビデオないからご存知でしょというわけで明日のコンサートを必ずですね見ていただこうと。いうわけでこれこれなんですかこれ,<笑>これ新しい技ですか<笑> New Action <笑> New Attitude <笑>はいというわけでメタリカの皆さんでした Thank you very much in the Yahoo Thank you Thank you Yay メタリカ本当にですねコンサートすごかったですまあまだ見ていない人もいるかもしれませんこれは見ておかないととんでもないことになりますこれは私が言うから Today's metal quiz question What two items are hanging on the furthest left tombstone on our album Master of Puppets We're Metallica And by the way the two winners get autographed t-shirts And records <laughs> and cars and houses and airports. Microwave ovens. And uh, hey, whatever else you want. Courtesy yes. of the record company. Kirk's phone number. m a r s s wig. <laughs> <laughs> With special guest Queens Reich. Reserve seats now at the box office, ticket centers, Maryland water beds, or charged by phone. March 9th, don't miss Metallica. Talk with Metallica guitarist Kirk Hammett. This is the rock and roll dream. After years of hard work, you and your band have made it to the top. The money's rolling in. All problems are a thing of the past, right? Well, not exactly. For one thing, as Metallica has discovered, the bigger you get, the more people there suddenly are trying to scam free passes to your concerts. My mother <laughs> called me up the other day and said, well, there's this、uh, CEO for the company you know, she works for who wants to come to the concert in Baltimore. And it's like, okay, fine, Mom, I'll put him on the guest list. <laughs> and then when the show's over and you just want to go back to your hotel and get a little sleep, some raucous pop star in the suite next door winds up keeping you awake all night. I saw Debbie Gibson here at the hotel, and、uh, she, she had、up. all this toilet paper out in the hallway. I was just like, kind of... <laughs> wait a second, I thought heavy metal bands did stuff like that. <laughs> These might be just minor annoyances if your tours were taking you to the great capital cities of the world, but that's not always the case either. We're playing places like Abilene, Texas, Savannah, Georgia, places I've never even knew existed. <laughs> Manhattan, Kansas. And then, wherever you go, there's always the dreaded S word to watch out for. One tag that we've, we've、uh, gotten a hold of is that we're a satanic band,、uh, satanic band which is、uh, totally, I mean, totally untrue. Oh, there are a few bands that are into Satanism in a vague, dopey way, but boy, does the rest of the hard rock fraternity ever get tired of hearing about it. We have the, the Garage Days. No. Uh, EP, which is an EP of cover tunes.、No. And、uh, two of the s-、uh, songs are on there are songs that、uh, these people like to attack the most. One song's called Green Hell,、mm. which isn't satanic in the least bit. I mean, the only reference to, uh, to, to any of that is you know, the word hell in the titer- title. And、uh, Crash Course in Brain Surgery. No. Yeah, it's. I, <laughs> no, it's- I don't, I don't see the connection myself. Such are the hassles of hard rock success. Are they worth it? Metallica will let you know. This tour ends next September. So, 
that's what, 16 months on the road, 17 months. If they can ever kick back long enough to find out. Two million copies of their latest album without a lot of airplay on radio stations or on MTV. They claim that they are living proof that heavy metal music is alive and well in America. And as our own News 4 headbanger Wadi Salvini tells us, thousands of fans think they are absolutely right. The name of their latest album is And Justice For All. If that doesn't ring a bell, how about the group's name? It's Metallica. If you've never heard of them, that's okay. They are the current superstars of heavy metal music. Drummer Lars Ulrich says the group isn't bothered by the lack of mainstream attention. We're satisfied with what we're writing and what we're putting together and so forth. And if radio wants to come along for the ride, they're welcome. But if not, you know, we've sold almost two million copies of the new album without any airplay or without any video play or anything like that. And, you know, it, it's, we've proven that it can be done. Heavy metal music has been criticized for alleged connections to Satan worship and the occult. Ulrich wants parents to look at the evidence before making a decision. I would uh, tell them not to let ignorance make the decision for them, and I would tell them to try and research a little bit about, you know, what the specific band they're talking about and realize that there are a lot of different bands out there in the heavy metal world. Tonight, Ulrich and his colleagues put on a polished show with lots of lights and a two-story blindfolded statue of justice. Their fans were loving every minute of it. A personal observation now, if you'll allow me. The music is not bad. However, it is a little loud. At Memorial Auditorium, I'm Wadi Salabini. News for Update. <laughs> he didn't bring any of the earplugs was founded by Danzig frontman Glenn Danzig. We asked Glenn about the Metallica connection. They were always uh, big fans. I met them a long time ago, and they always wanted to do uh, Green Hell. And they had asked me, and I sent them the lyrics and uh, the music. You know, they're great guys. I knew they'd do a good version of it. I see these are the good things that are happening in rock and roll and heavy metal these days. With albums, t-shirts, and skateboards. And when he pulled into New York recently to open an exhibit of his unusual work at the Psychedelic Solution Gallery, we were there to welcome him. People treated what I did and the activities in my life that I did, my drawings, the, um, you know, sports or anything that I did, they didn't like it. It was kind of like pushed aside. So it was like, I kind of felt like how people treated puss heads on their face, you know? It's like, we don't want this, it's like an imperfection on our perfect, you know, it's a blemish on society. That's how I felt, and so I just started the name when I was in like the punk hardcore scene, started signing the drawings like that, and it took off, I had no idea. What we'll do is we'll come up with a basic idea, we'll talk about it, and then we'll come to him with it, and he'll, he'll lay down a sketch on a pad of paper. James, he had this one idea, then I modified a little bit, then I drew it, he came over, looked at the pencils, he says, yeah, hell yeah, that's cool. A lot of it is 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 brutal and, uh, and violent and uh, morbid and, and gory also. And, uh, you know, it's, it's pretty cool. <laughs> It's not like a fascination with death, I just found a fascination with skulls because it was the inner part of a human being and so instead of like drawing a human being like everybody else was, I just started making up skull characters and now everybody wants me to draw skulls and everybody goes, don't you draw anything but skulls? But I go, that's what everybody wants. Everybody in this case being Metallica's legions of fans who've made Pusshead a mass market artist by snapping up millions of his Metallica t-shirts and skateboards. Some fans spend hundreds of dollars at a time on Pusshead's wearable art. Does it matter what they look like at all to you? Or? No way, as long as it's Metallica. It doesn't matter. Anything that's got Metallica on it, I'll buy it. People can, you know, either be horrified by it or amazed by it. Pussed, only on MTV. Metallica, and then on August 3rd, the largest listening party ever assembled in the history of mankind will take place at Madison Square Garden. Metallica will be playing the album in its entirety for all the fans who want to go out and check it out. That'll be August 3rd at Madison Square Garden. That's going to be a great party. You want to check that out. But now let's get this on the world premiere video, Metallica, and it's called Enter Sandman. With the band, I was fortunate enough to get a copy of the new record, and here it is. Ah, it's huge. It'll be known through history 
from here and beyond as the black Metallica album because it's pretty black, don't you think? But there is like this snake vibe down here in the corner. If you check this out, there's the logo. Now let's flip it over. Whoa, the tracks. Enter Sandman. You've seen that video here on MTV. It's killer. Sad but true. Crushing bass on this song. Holier than thou. Holier than thou. This thing just crunches. It's got the groove. You wouldn't believe it. Unforgiven. Fade to black fans. I'll call this Fade to Black Part 2. Wherever I May Roam, Don't Tread on Me, Killer Tracks, Through the Never, this is one of my favorite songs on the record, Nothing Else Matters. Can we say ballad, metalla ballad? First, maybe the last, it's unbelievable. You won't believe it, listen to it. Of Wolf and Men, The God That Failed, this song, which we documented in the magazine a few months ago, James told us was about his mother, the death of his mother, it's really, really heavy. My Friend of Misery, Unbelievable Leads, by Mr. Kirk Hammond and the struggle within the final track and a killer track. This record will be out in your stores nine days from today. And uh, there's a big party going on today in um, New York City at Madison Square Garden for the release of the Metallica record. 19,000 fans are going to hear the record nine days before it's released. It's incredible. And all I can say is go out and buy it nine days from now. Directed by Wayne Isham, who's worked with Bon Jovi and Motley Crue, among others, in the past, Metallica doesn't usually make videos or release singles before their albums, but the band says Enter Sandman warranted both. It seems like a good first song for people to hear. It's one of the simpler songs on the record, and it's like a pretty good indication of where our heads are at right now in terms of just wanting to do the more simple, condensed stuff. and more just simpler. Just a little more, just the groove things going, and it's a pretty cool song. Plus. You know, the, the lyric thing lends itself to a lot of possibilities in terms of, of visuals, so that's kind of why we jumped on that track, too. A kind of, like, vertigo, not really knowing what's real and what isn't kind of effect. That's what we wanted to go for. Not, uh, like, nightmares, but not, like, goofy, you know, Frankenstein comes in the room or something, you know, more like actual real kind of nightmares that actual people have, you know, kind of reoccurring dreams. <laughs> The one thing that bothers me about video, and I think what we're just trying to be really cautious about, is the fact that you don't want to make them too direct, so you give the whole song away, and you also just, they're so direct that after you've seen the video once or twice, you know, you know everything there. I mean, it's cool that you have stuff that just kind of makes your mind wander, you know, and that's hopefully what will happen with this video. The whole album will be in stores August 12th. Extreme rock than anything the group has previously attempted. The producer of the album, Bob Rock, is best known for his work with such commercial acts as Bon Jovi, Motley Crue, and The Cult. And when we asked Metallica why they decided to work with Rock, here in the latest installment of our interview of the week is what they told us. I mean, the way I look at it is that you just, he seems to have had this ability with all the records that he's done before, whether it be, you know, the Bon Jovi stuff or The Cult or, you know, um, what else has he done? <laughs> um, so, you know, he worked on some of those Aerosmith records and stuff where he just seemed to, and also the Motley album, where he just seemed to kind of, with all these bands, make their best album, you know, that seemed to bring some stuff out of these bands that other producers or whatever just maybe really didn't get out of them, like performance and sound-wise and stuff like that. And it just seemed like we felt that we maybe needed somebody to help you know, pull some of this stuff out of us or just somebody else to bounce ideas off of and just seem like the right kind of guy to, you know, I mean, Slipper When Wet, no matter what you think of the, of the songs on there, it's a really lively album. Oh, it has a lot of just life in it and bounce and it's just, you know, it's a great sounding record and it just seemed like he had that ability, so we went for it. Lars Ulrich of Metallica. Time to check out their video at number one on Most Wanted. Once again, it's Enter Sandman. Thing they've done to date, it even contains that greatest of rarities for a speed metal band, a ballad. We wondered what these guys have been listening to lately, and here's what they told us. The Armored Saint thing's pretty cool. The Metal Church thing. The Mind Funk record's pretty cool. I have a weakness for CC Music Factory. Things that make you go. Things that make you go. I'll leave it at that, okay? <laughs> he likes Chris Isaac, that's his big kind of thing, you know. 
It was like that Chris Isaac video, the first one, the black and white where they're playing, had just come on MTV. The world was on fire, no one could save me but you. We were just cutting like the last track, and he comes in, and like the day after it premiered or something, it's like, why don't you try and play the song with brushes? Where'd you get that from? Maybe the Chris Isaac song? <laughs> It's like, we all have our little things. DJs have long sampled metal riffs in creating their tracks, and now the speed metal band Anthrax has recruited Public Enemy to cut a remake of P.E.'s Bring the Noise, and Axl Rose has been considering asking the hardcore rap act N.W.A. to open for Guns N' Roses this fall. One metal band that hasn't caught the rap collaboration bug, however, is Metallica. And in the final installment of our interview of the week, drummer Lars Ulrich and guitarist James Hetfield explain why. None of us really, you know, want to go do a solo project or you know want to appear on some guy's album or anything we, we're really like it's, it's us and us only like. yeah i don't know just sometimes i just question the reasons why thing, things happen and it's just sometimes it's just kind of weird it seems like a lot of times they're ulterior motives i think you know i mean to be totally honest with you i think that the anthrax guys are genuine about what they're doing because i mean they i know scott's been into that kind of stuff for years and years and charlie too generally all this collaboration stuff and people guesting on each other's records and i don't know gets a little old kind of i just wish somebody i don't know it just gets a little cheap kind of slot themselves around right. you know Metallica's new album, called Metallica, will be out next week, and the band will begin a U.S. tour in October with custom-designed earplugs, apparently, at least for Ulrich and Hetfield, both of whom have been diagnosed by doctors as suffering from tinnitus, the ear-ringing syndrome that also plagues Who guitarist Pete Townsend. In fact, Hetfield has been told that if he doesn't stop playing such loud music, his condition could deteriorate into serious hearing loss. It's called simply Metallica. Last Saturday, the band turned up at an unusual free public listening party for the record at Madison Square Garden in New York City. Tabitha Soren has been monitoring all of this, and here's her report. Ted Luma's really pretty dead, but they're making Ted Luma right now. I think we finally come to the conclusion that you can rehearse in a little room, you know, forever and ever, and, and that's not really what makes the difference. The difference is going out and playing in front of people and just getting your chops together in front of an audience. This side of, of us, of just going out and playing to 800 people or 1,000 people like we're doing yesterday and tonight, I mean, that's something that I know we'll never get away from because it's just something that we like doing so much, just having people like right in your face and the intimacy of the whole thing. While bands on the West Coast were treated to Metallica live shows, East Coast bands weren't so lucky. Metallica came to Madison Square Garden, but not to perform. Instead, they gave away 19,000 free tickets for fans to come here and listen to their new album, which won't be in stores till August 12th. Do you feel ripped off that they're not going to play? Yeah. I don't. Yeah, definitely. The tickets were free. Usually, listening parties are held so a room full of music business insiders can listen to their new product. But tonight, everyone was invited, and it probably sets a record for being the largest listening party ever. So this is a very weird experience. You know, just being in an arena like this, 15,000 people in there, whatever, it's just like, we can't go up and play. We're kind of like walking around your backstage. Well, what do we do now, you know? Have a year. Why didn't you play here? Why didn't, why didn't you play here? Because you well, didn't. Okay. <laughs> Plus, we haven't played for like 14 months and we're literally like out of shape. And the other annoying thing is that our album played the garden before we did. Metallica is now on tour in Europe, but the group will be back to play the States in October. Metallica, the album, will be released this coming week. Not necessarily made us feel comfortable, but at least pulled performances out of us that were a lot livelier and had a lot more emotions to them and stuff like that. Before we go in and, and go for much more of like a perfect tape, you know, now the recording button's on, you know, we, now we have to go for it, but I think we would all kind of freeze up a little bit in our delivery. And this time around we went 
I much more did many more takes, you know, of each of our instruments and so forth, and just went for performances that had a lot more life and stuff in them. And he really pulled that out of us in a cool way. It seems like like the kids over here are now getting a little more subdued when it comes to throwing all the crap that they've. Uh, I mean, the mid '80s. I mean, there was just stuff flying everywhere, just sandwiches and bottles of and other substances. And I remember clearly when we played in 85, there was a whole ham. I mean, I'm not talking about like a ham sandwich. I'm talking about a whole ham, like this big, lying next to my drum kit. And it was like, that had like hit, you know, three feet further to the left or whatever, you know. I might have been sitting here. At least now it's kind of like you can realize that you can use videos as a medium just like records as long as you have total control of them and just be careful of, of you know, how you use them. In the meantime, Carl and Me Bad are on the way up. They climb up two spots to number three with CMB. Natalie Cole and Unforgettable dropping out of the top spot for the first time in weeks, which means, of course, we have a brand new number one album in America. And in case you haven't heard it yet, let me tell you, debuting in the number one spot, it is Metallica. Their self-titled fifth album, to no one's surprise, enters in the top spot. Hi, Megadeth here as the Headbangers Ball continues. Here's a look back at the top Skull Crushers of the week. Number five, Megadeth, Go to Hell. Number four is Skid Row, Slave to the Grind. Number three, Motorhead with Angel City. Number two, Anthrax featuring Public Enemy. And last but not least, number one is Metallica, Enter Sandman. Metallica pushed Anthrax out of the number one spot. Here's Enter Sandman. Lars, you should be happy about that. Now in 92, like a Metallica concert. Why is it so amazing? If you've been to the shows, you're seeing a stage like you've never seen before. It's unbelievable. It's got this thing called the snake pit. It's a hole cut out in the middle of the stage where a bunch of kids, lucky kids, and VIPs get to sit in the, stand in the pit and, and look out to the audience and be parallel with the band. It's an amazing experience. The kids that get to sit in the pit, I mean stand in the pit, are, are up in the cheapo seats and the roadies go out before the show and they trade tickets and they bring these kids that, that didn't have any idea they would be getting this metallic experience down into the pit. Now, you're going to see some footage and I snuck my camera in and I'm sorry Lars but I didn't think you'd get upset but I took my camera into the pit and I shot a little bit of footage and this will just give you a really small taste about what it's like to be right there in the pit. Roll the tape. a couple of seconds in the snake pit with Metallica. You can see how heavy it is. Now, speaking of Metallica, I know a few weeks ago, I promised all you dudes that wrote in a friend at large a free magazine. Now, I haven't been able to get to my mail because I've had some personnel changes at the office, but we're starting to do it now, and I'm sending you guys this cool Metallica Tour Book 92, which has tons of cool shots and the mighty head field and all this good stuff. Anyway, next week, huge, huge, huge Metallica stadium tour information. Be here, you'll want to see it. See you, dude! Break. There's still some people that think you guys aren't playing live. I mean, we're here. The show is going to go on. The tour is going on. Well, you know, look at it. I mean, it's going on in front of your eyes, as you can see. It's just uh, funny, like all week, kids, you know, I did Rockline the other day. I was hanging out at MCV a couple days ago, and just all week, kids come up, you know, with Axel, you know, this whole thing with St. Louis and blah, blah, blah. Is this thing actually going down? And like I said, I mean, 
live and direct in the flesh from RFK Stadium. We are here. We've done our sound check. Everything's ready to go. This tour is going to happen. We got 25, 26 shows, and uh, everybody can't wait to get on with it. So, whatever you know, I know that between Metallica and Guns and Rumors. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> I think you should. Guns and rumors. I mean, Guns and Roses. There are more rumors going around than like any other two bands that you combine. And the main rumor, like I said, is that this thing is actually not going down. But we are here to tell you that this is actually reality. The dates have not been rescheduled. If you've got tickets and there's a date on that show, the show is going on. Nothing's been rescheduled. You know, tickets are flying out. I'm not trying to sell this thing to anybody, but like they're going out in LA. It's LA sold out like immediately. Half hour or something like that. Which, so, can get any extra ticket? We'll talk about that <laughs> later in the bathroom, okay? Um, you know, it. Tickets are going on sale. You know, get them quick because they blow out real quick. And this is a reality. Guns and Roses and Metallica are actually touring the states together with Faith No More. With Faith No More, and here we are. So let's get on with it. Right on. And we'll be back just to even prove to you at the uh, RFK Stadium in Washington, D.C. with Metallica, Guns N' Roses, and Faith No More. Guns and Rumors. Guns and Rumors. <laughs> of the stage and when he was communicating that to James before the show about where the flames was going to be there was clearly a, mis a misunderstanding there about where they were going to be and uh, James just James basically just walked right into a flame that came up from behind him that came up behind him basically well we're glad he's okay as, as far as the riots are concerned were you there when the trouble started yeah we were um, we were sitting eating dinner in our dressing room and we were watching uh, guns on the on the monitor in our dressing room and and it was clear that they were not having a, you know one of their better shows and i actually went in to take a phone call in the dressing room uh, you know to talk to our manager about james's situation and uh and then i, I was told that axel had just walked off stage and at that point we were just told to you know stay in our dressing rooms and, and we basically just kept kept to our dressing rooms and 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 just you know things didn't really get too out of hand inside the venue as, as far as I, I could see, but it was mostly up in the concourses and, and up, you know, kind of outside, outside the place. And, um, and so, but, you know, nothing much really had, you know, nothing much was clearly evident from where we were inside the dressing rooms. And Have you talked to down. any of the Guns N' Roses members oh, yeah. since I mean, then? We, Do you know why they left the stage? Um, Axel still didn't feel like he was, you know, fully recovered with his, um, with his throat stuff and uh you know there's been you know what we have out here is, is a combination of of our pa and, and and some of their monitors and stuff like that and it's just it's not been completely right yet for both bands and, and axel just you know didn't feel like he wanted to you know uh, keep taking chances with his, his voice and stuff like that and he they've been going through like monitor guys like right left and central for the whole tour and, and nobody had really been able to give him what they needed up on stage and i knew that he had just come to the point where it was too much for him to deal with well we know the toronto show had to be canceled do you have any idea how many other shows have to be canceled and well, right when you'll be playing we're, again yeah right now we're in a, in a, in a waiting situation um I was in after the show and sat down with Axel and we talked this through and um, there's a definite, you know, both of us are obviously going to make all these dates up and, and I mean that is our priority and, and we're going to stop at nothing to do that but right now we're kind of, you know, both of us have commitments starting around October 10th which is kind of our cutoff date so we're trying right now to schedule as many of the shows in up till, till you know, probably sometime in early October. What it's looking like is that, um, there are two options right now, depending on how quick James can can heal his hands and stuff like that. Right now, they're saying that it could be as little as two weeks. So we're going to um, probably the next couple of days try and find a guitar player, you know, who can, you know, be on standby if James' hands don't heal that quickly. And um, which is basically, it, you know, there's two options, like I said. Basically, you know, one is waiting for James to um, to completely heal and then go on and play play the shows like that. Axel told me that, that Guns would definitely wait for us till we were ready. And like I said, the other option is to, um, to get a, a, sec a second guitar player that would come in and t play all of James's parts. And when James was ready to just get up on stage and go out and sing basically as a front man, then, then, that's, then he would do that. So those are the two options that we're weighing right now. And as soon as we, we figure out which one we're going to go with and, and where we're going to start playing again, obviously you guys will be among the first to know. 
So does it look like you'll be playing Denver on Wednesday as had been planned? No, Denver is uh, officially postponed. And uh, right now there's uh, a makeup date for Denver sometime in the third week of September. And so that's, that's official. Denver is postponed till the, the third week of September. And we're basically taking them, taking the, the shows on a, on a one-by-one -one basis right now. But like I said, you know, the main thing is right now to, to figure out if, if James right. is going to be ready in two weeks, then we'll wait for that. Okay, and well, we hope he gets better as soon as possible. Yeah, Thanks so for taking the time it. to talk to us. Of course, have us at any time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. According to the latest word from the venue and the concert's promoter, damages were not as extensive as first thought, although no exact figure has yet been released. The Canadian provincial capital of Montreal last Saturday night for a show that ended in a riot after Metallica frontman James Hetfield was sent to the hospital with pyrotechnic injuries, and Axl Rose abruptly ended his band set after 55 minutes, reportedly because of bad sound. At least eight police and ten concertgoers sustained minor injuries in the melee that followed, and a dozen arrests were made. Initial reports suggested that damages to the stadium and to near by stores might total as much as one million dollars, but this figure was later said to be overstated. Things started going awry about halfway through Metallica's set when an onstage flame effect accidentally engulfed James Hetfield, inflicting second-degree burns on his arms and legs. He was taken to a local hospital for treatment, and on Monday, Metallica drummer Lars Ulrich phoned in this report to MTV News. James is here in Denver um, with me, and uh, he's, uh, under the circumstances, doing incredibly well. I mean, it's a miracle. Everybody's saying it's a miracle that he got off, you know, with just uh, burns on his uh, arms and, and on his hands and a little bit up on his face. But, you know, considering he was pretty much engulfed in flames for about a full second, it's, it, all the doctors are saying it's a miracle he got off as good as he did. Axel still didn't feel like he was, you know, fully recovered with his... Um, with his throat stuff, and, uh, you know, there's been, you know, what we have out here is a combination of, of our PA and, and, and some of their monitors and stuff like that, and it's just, it's not been completely right yet for both bands, and, and Axel just, you know, didn't feel like he wanted to, you know, uh, keep taking chances with his, his voice and stuff like that. And there's two options, basically, you know, one is waiting for James to, um, to completely heal and then go on and play play the shows like that. Axel told me that, that guns would definitely wait for us till we were ready. The other option is to, um, to get a, a, sec a second guitar player that would come in and t play all of James' parts, and when James is ready, to just get up on stage and go out and sing, basically, as a front man. Metallica has been auditioning players to find a temporary guitarist for the tour, but between Hetfield's injury and Axl Rose's intermittent throat problem, the Guns and Metallica tour seems to be temporarily but indefinitely sidelined. We'll keep you posted. What? <laughs> and quit the show halfway through, reportedly because of voice problems suffered by lead singer Axl Rose. Then Metallica, touring with Guns N' Roses, cut short their set after singer James Hetfield was injured when a stage prop exploded. A spokeswoman says Hetfield spent a day in the hospital with first and second degree burns on his hand. Wednesday, the two bands postponed their Denver show to give Hetfield more time to recover. Metallica's San Diego show was also postponed. No More will be relaunching their U.S. tour in Phoenix next Tuesday, ending a forced hiatus that began on August 8th when Metallica singer and guitarist James Hetfield sustained second-degree burns on his hands and arms during an onstage pyrotechnics accident in Montreal. Hetfield is in good enough shape to sing again, and while it's not yet certain whether he'll be well enough to play guitar, another guitarist, John Marshall of Metal Church, who subbed for Hetfield when he broke his wrist on tour six years ago, will be on hand to take up whatever slack there is. The Guns of Metallica tour is scheduled to run through mid-September, following which the groups will play makeup dates for canceled concerts in Denver, San Diego, and Seattle. In addition, Metallica and Faith No More only have added an August 31st show in Atlanta.